Yo guys! So a couple of days ago, I was watching a Samsung Unpacked event while trying to study for a class, which I swear will be the death of me. I'm just saying, I probably now know more about how memory is moved to and from 32-bit systems than I ever wanted to know, so I guess that's cool. So anyway, I'm here watching an event, and Samsung, they're talking about things like bringing back the memory cards, I'm like, oh, that's nice, and a bigger battery. Then out of nowhere, they say liquid cooling, and I'm like, oh shit, liquid cooling in smartphones? What? What is this black magic we're speaking of? You're probably wondering, well, where do they put the pump and the radiator and all the stuff to make liquid cooling possible? Well, liquid cooling on your smartphone is not exactly the same thing like it is on your desktop. Samsung is actually using something called a heat pipe with just a little bit of liquid in it. So how a heat pipe works, think of a closed tube that goes from one end of the phone to the CPU. Now within that closed tube, there's some liquid. When the CPU gets hot, that liquid heats up and evaporates and goes to the cool side of the phone. From there, it cools down, condenses, turns back into a liquid, and goes back down to the CPU. In that whole process, carrying heat away from the CPU. Now, Samsung is not the first to employ this heat pipe system. This could be found in many other electronics, as well as Microsoft Lumia phones. So as far as how well it works, well, that definitely varies depending on the phone. Within the Galaxy S7, I'll be interested to see if it makes any difference within temperatures. So the moral of the story here, don't drop your phone in water, and water cooling could make a difference within smartphone temperatures. So guys, as always, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, go over to Twitter and follow me at DBBen, and as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.